Hello, Algebra 1. Uh, tonight's notes are on solving quadratics using the graphing method. But before we do that, I would like to uh, refresh your memory on how to use the quadratic formula. We're going to go over this example really quickly, and then we're going to solve the same exact problem, but this time using the graphing method. So using the quadratic formula, we know that that's negative b, opposite of b, excuse me, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, in this example, I'm going to use this equation, y equals 1 half x squared minus 8. Now, when we use the quadratic formula, it gives us an x value. x is <clears throat> negative b, in this case there isn't any, plus or minus the square root of b squared, again 0, minus 4 times a times c, negative 8, all over 2 a. I'm going to go ahead and simplify that one a little bit further. We get 0 plus or minus, in fact at this point I don't need to write the 0, we get plus or minus the square root of negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, negative 2 times negative 8 is 16 over 1. Well, plus or minus 16 the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. So when we were using the quadratic formula, we were coming up with x equals 4, x equals negative 4. Here's my two solutions. x equals 4, x equals negative 4. The solution to a quadratic is what x is when y is 0. Let me reiterate that with the next example. So if you need to copy that down, go ahead and pause the video. Here's example 1b. We're going to take that same exact equation. y equals 1 half x squared minus 8. What I'd like you to do is to go ahead and graph that. Pause the video. Graph it on your own. Um, and then hit play to see how it's graphed and then to see how that is related to the solution of this equation. <clears throat> so for this solution, the first step we said is we need to find the vertex and the x value of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Well, negative b is 0, 2a is 1 half, there we go, that just gives us 0. So to find the y value, we need to take that 0 and plug it back into the original equation. So that's 1 half 0 squared minus 8. <clears throat> so that's 0 minus 8. That gives us negative 8. So our vertex is going to be at 0, negative 8. Let me go ahead and write our xy chart. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to create our xy axis. Okay. <clears throat> and on this x-axis, 0, negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, is our vertex. In this case, I know that it's going to um, open upward because A is positive. The next value of x over to the right is 1. So I'm going to take that 1 and plug it into the equation. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. And 1 half minus 8 is negative 7 and a half. So 1 and negative 7 and 1 half gives me something that looks like this. Let's take 2. So 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 minus 8 is negative 6. My next value is at 2, negative 6. <clears throat> I'm not sure how sharp this is going to be. I'm going to go in and go one more. So let's do 3. 3 squared is 9. 
9 times a half, well, half of 9 is 4 and a half, and 4 and a half minus 8 gives you negative 3 and 1 half. So I'm going to go and plot that out. That's 3 <coughs> and negative 3 and 1 half. It looks like this. Now, you know it's going to be symmetric along your axis of symmetry. I'm going to go ahead now and take my marker and I'm going to connect those dots and try to continue that same curve. Now that I've continued that curve, it looks like I have a point of intersection here and a point of intersection here. At this point, I know that this is point 4, comma 0, and I know this point is, oops, this point is negative 4, comma 0. So based off of this method, this point and that point, x is equal to 4 when y is 0, and x is equal to negative 4 when y is 0. These represent the solutions. x is 4, x is negative 4. Looking back here on the quadratic, we said x is 4, x is negative 4, using the quadratic formula. What it essentially means is your value of y is 0, your x is at the y-intercepts, excuse me, at your x-intercepts, are your solutions. All right. I'm going to take a second to copy that down. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with another example with you. So this is example number two. We're not going to mess around with the quadratic formula right now. Just remember, <clears throat> the x-intercepts are the solutions. Okay, so let's go ahead and do example number two with this equation. <clears throat> x squared minus x equals two. So essentially you need to set it equal to zero, get it in standard form. And you can actually factor this if you really wanted to. You see that x minus 2 times x plus 1 will give you that b when you oy it. And then you set each of those equal to 0. But let's use the graphing method just for practice. You need your vertex at negative b over 2a. You get your 1, 2 times 1. My vertex is going to be at 1 half for x. Plug that into the original equation. 1 half squared minus 1 half minus 2. So that's a fourth minus a half minus 2. <clears throat> 1 fourth minus 1 half is negative 1 fourth. Negative fourth minus 2 is negative 2 and a fourth. So we have our x, we have our y. Uh, pause. So we have our x and our y values of our vertex. So this vertex is not a whole number vertex. But if I move one space over, and that's 1, and another space over, that's 2, and I plug those in, 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. I plug in 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 2 minus 2 is 0. Do the same thing for negative 1 and negative 2, and you'll find you get a negative 2 and a 0. Take your graph, create your x-y axis, plug in, I mean, uh, plot out your vertex. Vertex is at 1 half and negative 2 and 1 fourth, so probably around here. We have 1, negative 2, 
we have 0, negative 2, we have 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. There goes your graph. Looking at the graph, you have your x-intercepts right here. So x equals negative 2, and right here, x equals positive 2. So those are our two solutions, 2 and negative 2. Excuse me. Uh, it looks like I misgraphed that. Let me do this last part back here. Okay. Um, it looks like it should be right here. There goes my symmetry. That's much better. So we have that portion of our graph and this portion of our graph. We have an x at negative 1 and an x at positive 2. That's more appropriate negative 1, x equals 2. There goes our two solutions. Go ahead and take a moment, copy that out. That's all we have this evening for our notes. We're going to practice the skill for our warm-up and our class assignment tomorrow.